All right, it is <clears throat> Friday morning, and the project for today is mounting a new 12 volt panel. Got breakers built into it already. We decided to mount the panel in the most convenient spot we could, but at the same time, a place where it'd be out of the way. Right here seemed to be the best choice. Easiest to access, easiest to supply power to, and a straight shot back to the battery bank. Meanwhile, Justin was busy trying to save a little money by making our own high-speed backbone cable. Soldering <laughs> onto our yeah. soldering C-Talk HS cable. Thank you. So we don't have to spend $130 on a 10 meter one. You almost done? Uno mas. He finished up by using marine heat shrink at the cable ends. The finished install looks clean and neat and has proven to be easy to access. So this is what I started with. A little regular connector Justin just put on. It's got a little, a little shoulder right there that I have to grind down so this will fit in the chart plotter like a Raymarine HS cable does. All that was needed in order to use a regular high-speed network cable in a Raymarine high-speed backbone was a little ingenuity. They make their chart plotter so that normal Cat5 cable can't be used, but we figured out a way around this. File off the shoulder and it fits right in. First, we used the cannon plug and drilled a hole in it. We then fed the line through it and attached the connector. We finished by wrapping it in electrical tape, followed up by some sort of rubber waterproofing tape that we found on the boat. Now, both chart plotters communicate with each other and share information for just a fraction of what it could have cost us. Yeah, um. Bam! Oh, we can change the channel. You like that serious, don't you? The next day, the guys from Keys Rigging arrived to install the last two pieces of rigging that we needed. And once they finish, our boat will finally have 100% of the standing rigging replaced. We started with the goal striker, the piece we were worried about the most because the crossbar and the goal striker share the same rigging bolt, which meant during this process, the crossbar had to be completely detached. But with a little luck and a little persuasion, it went back together without any complications. Now onto the last piece to replace, the port side backstay. Steve quickly hoisted 50 feet up the mast and released the old cable. But down on deck, the chain plate needed to be modified to fit the new backstay so he had to hang up on the mast for over an hour. But soon after that, they were tightening all the turnbuckles and taking measurements, and we could finally relax. But we also made time to install the serious weather receiver and paint the engine rooms. Next time, we'll overhaul a water maker and do our best to install and wire 840 watts of solar power, but that will have to wait once again, until next time. How's it going so far? My neck hurts. Does it? I'm pretty comfortable. I bet. 
I mean, I can't see the red ones. That's what I went out and got the camera for. <laughs> I almost did that without shooting the fucking film. <laughs> and you've already ran your hair into your hair. <laughs> oh, I got another fucking uh, blooper for my next film. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Jesus, it finally freaking recorded. Bit.